Okay, so now in our sort of our road through all the rules of exponentiation, uh, there is this issue of, okay, we know how to put things together when we're multiplying and stuff. Uh, what about when you're dividing? So we talked a little bit about division of some things, but now I want to talk a little bit more about that. Again, remember with exponentiation, you can always go back to the fundamentals and just write it all out. And let me try to illustrate that with an example. So suppose that we wanted to take a look at the value of, let's say, 2 to the fifth divided by 2 cubed. Now, uh, how could you make progress with this? Well, okay, there's going to be canceling we can do, but the way to see this the easiest is just to write it all out. Now, I, I'm not proposing, by the way, that you do this on every single problem. I'm proposing that you do this whenever you're not quite sure what the right rule is, because this will always work. So if I write out three copies of the 2 on the denominator and five copies of the 2 out in the numerator, then it's sort of easy to see what, what I can do. I can cancel all sorts of good stuff, like this 2 can cancel away with that 2. This produces a 1. This 2 cancels away with that 2. This 2 cancels that 2. And now on the bottom, remember, we don't have a 0, but we have our invisible friend, Mr. 1. So we have a 1 down there. And the top, we have 2 times 2, which is 4. So this whole thing equals 2 to the uh, squared, or just 4. OK, so how did we get from the 5 exponent and the 3 exponent in the denominator to a 2 exponent? And the answer is we subtracted. And you can see that here, right? There's no mystery here. I've got 5 on top, and I subtracted off the 3 I had on the bottom. That leaves me with 2. So in fact, there's a fundamental rule here that's really easy, and that is the following. If I have a to the n power, and I divide it by a to the m power, then what am I left with? I'm left with a to the n minus m. Notice that I take n minus m, the exponent on the numerator minus the exponent on the denominator. Uh, a really great little mistake would be to take m minus n. But if you think about what that means and think about the cancellation, you'll see that, in fact, this is the right way to go. OK, fun. Well, in fact, this is really fun. Because now I can tell you all sorts of neat stuff that, and show it to you. And not just tell you. It's like show and tell. I'm going to show and tell. For example, let's suppose that I'm thinking of any number at all, a, for any number. Now, let's just pretend it's not 0, because of course, dividing by a 0, if I put a 0 down there, that ain't too good. So let's take an a that's not 0. Could be negative, could be positive. I don't even want you to tell me what it is. Now, look what happens if I take a and divide it by itself. Well, on the one hand, if I take a, and divide it by a, well, I know what I get. You cancel, and you get 1. Why am I wasting your time, you're asking? Well, let's now use this fact. This is a to the first power, and this is a to the first power, and now I see how to combine them. I subtract the exponents, and what do I get? I get a to the 1 minus 1, 0. So we just discovered a really neat fact. If you take any non-zero number, and raised to the 0 power, it always equals the number 1. Isn't that cool? Now, you know, people hear that thing, and they always go, why is that true? Well, now you see it's just a fact about canceling away. You can see it for yourself. So anything to the 0 is 1. Now, notice we can't put 0 to the 0. That actually, mathematicians start to shake, and they get the willies, because that would sort of mean we're dividing by 0, and as, and as you know, that's not good. So we don't do that. But if any a is any number that's not 0, you raise to the 0 power, you always get 1. So that's terrific. So that's a great consequence of this fact. I want to now show you another great consequence. Like This is a fact that like, has so many little nooks and crannies, you can just have fun with it all day. It's sort of like bringing it out of parties, because people will love playing with it. Let me write it back up here really fast. If I have a to the n, and I divide it by a to the m, then this equals a to the n minus m. OK, now, uh, with this fact, we can do something else. Suppose that I look at just this, 1 over a to the m. Nothing on top. Well, what does that equal? How can I write that as just a to a power? a to a power. Well, the way to do that is to use what we already figured out. I can write 1 as a, namely a to the 0 power over a to the m. Notice how I'm just not doing anything new. I'm just doing variations on what we've already discovered. That's all that math is. And what's the recipe? You subtract. But remember the order. It's the numerator exponent minus the denominator exponent. So that's going to be a to what power? 0 minus m. Well, that's just minus m. 
So now, through this neat formula that you already are convinced is worth its weight in gold, we get another freebie. We get 1 over a to the m is the same thing as a to the minus m. That is to say, we finally understand, or at least I finally understand, what a negative exponent would mean. Right? We all know what a to the 5 means. It's a times a times a times a times a. But what would a to the minus 5 be? What does it mean to take a and multiply it by itself negative 5 times? Ain't going to happen. But now we see what that should mean. It should mean the reciprocal of a to the fifth. So a to the minus 5 would be 1 over a times 1 over a times 1 over a times 1 over a times 1 over a. So that's really cool. When you see negative exponents, that means you take a reciprocal. And so that is a really neat fact, which all came from this. Now, let me just look at some real quick examples to drive these ideas home. <laughs> uh, here we go. The first one, let's take minus 3, that whole quantity, and raise it to the minus 2 power. Okay, now what would that be? Well, let's think about that. First of all, the way I tackle these problems, by the way, is to look at the exponents and very slowly untangle them. Again, always trying to take a hard problem, break into little the basic components, move from there. So let's see. That negative exponent always gives me a little bit of a concern, so I want to take care of that immediately. A negative exponent means I take a reciprocal. And so the reciprocal I would take is the following. I'd take the whole thing, 1 over, just copy everything down, but now make that a positive 2. Here is a wonderful mistake. Some person might say, oh, let me start even with a better mistake. That was a, not a, that was a mistake. That was my mistake. That wasn't a wonderful mistake. That was sort of a stupid mistake. But now I'm going to show you a really wonderful mistake. A wonderful mistake would be someone thinks, okay, uh, negative, that means I, I flip it, and so they say something like this. That's a great mistake, right? Because they remembered if you have a negative exponent, you're supposed to flip something. Of course, that person wasn't thinking about exactly what they're supposed to be flipping. They just flipped something instinctively. If that person would have written the thing out and remembered how to subtract the exponents when you're dividing, that person would have been led to realize that you flip this thing and then you put it over with a positive 2. Another wonderful mistake, by the way, would be to put 1 over minus 3 and then still keep the negative 2 there. There's a the person that flipped but was so en enthusiastic about flipping, he kept the negative sign in there, which means he has to flip it again, and then that would be the wrong answer. So remember, when you flip, the negative sign would go away. Okay, well now we're home free because now we just have to square that little thing, which is easy. 1 over minus 3 times minus 3 is just 9. So pretty easy. Let's try another one. How about minus 3 raised to the minus 3 power? What would that be? Well, the negative sign here means I flip the whole thing. And now I have to multiply negative 3 by itself three times. And that's going to give me negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. So actually I see a negative 27. And I like to write answers as negative 1, the negative on top, rather. But either one's fine. They're correct. And so the answer is negative 1 over 27. Pretty straightforward. Let's try one last one here. Oh, let's get a new page. What the heck? The last one is the following. Let's take 3 fourths and raise that whole thing to the minus 2 power. Aha! What's going to happen here? Well, first we flip. So that would be 1 over 3 fourths squared. Then I can square 3 fourths, and remember the rules of exponents. You just can square each of the terms. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. Now, what do you do when you have this compound fraction? Right? Remember, this is a complex fraction. As a complex, doesn't know what to do. You take the bottom, and what do you do? Whoop! Flip it and multiply. But now we're just multiplying by 1. So this is actually a walk in the park. You just take the reciprocal. It'd be uh, 16 over 9. Remember that fact. When you got down there, flip. So the negative sign gets you down there. So negative exponents, not a problem. It just means you have to flip the whole thing to the exponent with now a positive number there. That's all.